Hey folks, I've decided to do a series of um, videos that's introduction to playing guitar. Um, so if you don't really play guitar at all or you kind of dabbled, this is a video for you. If you've been playing for a while, you might get some stuff out of it. Um, but I just want to try and get an exercise to you that I feel like is probably the best exercise on guitar to as an introduction. Uh, that I think the biggest issues that I come across teaching people to play is um, probably the dexterity of their left left hand. You know, they really struggle like holding the chord, for example, or you know, just, you know, trying to get into eventually playing a scale or whatever, or playing a melody. Uh, really, what you've got to get down first, I think, in my opinion, is your, the dexterity of your left hand. And this is the exercise that I recommend because it's quite simple. You can just sit on the lounge and you can just run it and run it because it is uh, something that you need a lot of repetition to do. Now, one thing I'll talk about is bridging your finger uh, is something to be aware of. When you're holding notes on a guitar, you should learn to bridge your finger and hold the guitar string with the tip of your finger you know sometimes it is relevant to hold it with a different part of your finger but for the sake of getting into playing guitar and starting you want to try and uh, use the tip of your finger now the other thing is that i see you know this is these are frets fret one fret two which are these metal bars along here okay in between is where you want to hold the string but having said in between you don't want to hold the string here so that there's a large space here that's likely to give you that rattly horrible if we move it up so that there's just a tiny space in between your finger and that the fret that's closest to the body of the guitar you get a cleaner tone so um, yeah, that might be your first step. Get the bridge in your finger. And see that indent on my finger there? That's exactly where I'm talking about. That's That indent is from me holding that string down. So you can see my finger's bridged. It's not flat. I'm bridging up over the top of it. So that would be your first step. Just find that correct position within the fret. Hold it down. Okay, then if we lay all our fingers and here's another big problem I, I watch people try to just do this I'll introduce just just putting one finger per fret on the low E string of the guitar and because of the, the mechanics of what you're doing with your body even that can create a very early challenge and what I say to students is have a look at where your elbow is because if your elbow's out look what that does to the mechanics of your hand so if your pinky then if your elbow's way out here and your pinky is trying to get to here it it can't but we bring the elbow in close to our body and your pinky can actually reach up higher beyond further down the fret so so there's that there's also the mechanics of your wrist and your hand you know you can rotate your wrist so there's that as well if you've got your wrist rotated this way you can rotate more so just when you try and get to this this configuration here where you've got you've got your all four fingers one fret each on the, on the low E string because in terms of the mechanics of your body you've got to be able to get that under control first. You're not gonna be able to do much of anything otherwise. And I hear people go, oh, my finger's too short. Um, I, you know, or, my fingers don't stretch or I can't reach. It's not that, it's just the position that you're holding your body in and you can do it. Um, I've seen people all different shapes and sizes. There's guys playing with their feet for goodness sake. So you can do it, believe me. Um, so, what we're going to do with this exercise, we've got to here, 
we're going to get that next finger doing the same thing and we're going to swap so when that second finger is bridged and playing in between those frets with just that little bit of space here not a lot of space not in the middle and not towards the back up here so we get a nice clean tone that's your second note and just I'm just using the pick just angle down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. just holding the pick between the thumb and the index finger I think most of you probably have at least seen that and have got your heads around that and I'm just I've also got my pinky and my ring finger touching here. And I do that because it's a reference point. So a lot of what we're trying to learn and what we're trying to get under control is muscle memory. So that once we, let me show you this exercise and, and then I'll talk to you about what I'm talking about muscle memory. That's not where you're going to get to at the end of the day, but I'm trying to just show you the point of that's what we're moving towards. And uh, also what I've done just now is not something that I've sat there and gone, oh, this note, that note, this note, that note, next string, blah, blah. There is no conscious thought process around what I'm doing. It's muscle memory. I know the exercise. I know what I'm doing. My left hand speaks fluently with my brain and my brain says we're gonna run that exercise it knows it remembers it knows all those positions my elbow knows where to be all of these things uh, my right hand knows how to hold a pick my pinky especially knows to touch the body of the guitar here and that's a reference point for my muscle memory so that I know how far I've got to stretch my hand for that string how far I've got to stretch my hand for that string, etc. You see that gap pinches up. And eventually, my right hand virtually knows it automatically. Uh, if you've, I know, see a lot of people that got their hand floating and they're trying to go, oh, how do I pick this string, this string? I virtually can't do it. I've got to have that reference point. So that's another little little trick to start with okay so that's our starting point here with the right hand starting point with the, the left hand I am by the way I'm starting on the third fret which is uh, it's a G not that that matters terribly but you could start uh, virtually any fret what's important is the fret that you start on um, you're going to your index finger is always going to be on that fret and then each finger will be assigned a, a space between frets and it will follow those frets all the way down as we work through that's step by step okay first step is this step we've got our index finger we're going to go back to where i started from so i'm on the third fret that's where that first dot is and I'll, we'll talk about that eventually. Why well, you got dots on your, your guitar? They all do it, and we'll get there. Okay. So that's your first step. Second step, just picking downwards with our pick again, with our fingers down here touching. So we've got a reference point. So first step, second step, third step. Now you'll notice where my fingers are when they're not being used. My index finger is being used right now, but look where my other three fingers are. They're not down here. Right, now this is another rookie error. Your fingers need to be where close to where they're needed. If you notice, they're up above, but I haven't discarded them, I've kept them relatively close to where they're needed because I don't want to have to move them too far. So, one, two, three, four, and that's gonna be a battle. Especially when you get to your pinky, and this is why 
I make sure students start with this. If, and a lot of people you, you want to teach yourself, you might do this. And you leave the pinky out of it. All right, and that's fine. Well, it's not fine. You can do it and you'll get away with it for a little while. But you're eventually you're gonna hit a wall where you're trying to do something like the old 12 bar blues pack. If that's something that you wanted to do, but there's a lot of other things that you will probably eventually want to do where you need to use your pinky. So engage it um, from the beginning because that's another it's a big mistake to make is to leave old Pinky out. You need to work on him and develop him. He, he is going to be the weakest link, but what you need to do initially, especially, is share the workload between all of these fingers. So you can see the exercise that we're talking about here, and we're just um, index finger, second finger, third finger the low E string. Once we get to there, our index finger is finding the next string down on the same fret that it started, just one string down, because each finger is assigned a fret. And this is also a critical thing that as you move forward and we start to play scales like the major scale and the minor scale, this is a, a principle that you will need to engage. Your fingers will need to be assigned to a fret as you play a scale. So, first, first finger, second, third, fourth, next string. I'm picking just down for the moment. So we're on the, the D string now, which is the, the third string down. Now the next string down. And see here, I'm here, and my index finger's going the next string down, this is gonna be a challenge for you. You gotta, your muscle memory's gonna be, where, where does that go? So you gotta, you'll have to look, and you'll have to think, and you'll have to be right, it's there. And it's gonna be a challenge, and it's slow going to start with, but remember I said at the start, the curve is, it doesn't budge, it just sits. But if you stick with this, and you get it to this point, this exercise to that point, what it does for the dexterity of your left hand, the dexterity of your right hand, the muscle memory between the two, knowing where your pick is in terms of what string, knowing where these fingers are in terms of what fret, um, is a very important foundation. I was thinking base, but yeah, foundation. You can't see my face. Some would say that's a good thing. Um, yeah, it's a foundation. So what, that's what we're really talking about. Is To me, if I'm teaching a student, I'm like, I'm sorry, this isn't gonna be particularly good fun for you for a little while, but just hunker down, get into it, do this exercise. And then, so, it just, I'll run through this um, one more time slowly as a reference point. You might want to just rewind to this bit. Mm. Once you got there, you, you probably, you could introduce a metronome. And do it to time, increase the time, and then get to the point. And then the other thing is, with your pick eventually, and for the advanced players, maybe it's all slightly more advanced, not like it's a, 
um, advanced lesson at all, but alternate picking. So first one down, second one up, down, up, down, so. And that is eventually what gives you a lot more speed in your playing. Is the up, down picking. So like the, you know, the guitars, guitarists that are playing frantically fast, they're all alternate picking up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Very difficult to get that speed with just, just down picks. Possible to a point, but you can do it faster if you alternate pick. Oh, look, I think that's about it. What that'll give you is some strength. It'll toughen up the tips of your fingers. It will create this link between your brain and your left hand that travels up through your brain down to your right hand as well. The timing of this, it might seem basic, but you gotta learn it. If you haven't learned it, you have to learn it. Uh, and it's, it's difficult and it's time consuming. Um, so there's that. What it, uh, moving past that, if you had a look at a major scale, then you'll understand I'm starting from a different position, but I am assigning my fingers to a fret each, but I'm playing a musical scale this time. I'm not just playing note, 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 all the way up as an exercise. So that's the G major scale. Now, to be able to do that, you need the dexterity, you need the strength in your fingers, you need your fingertips to be relatively tough, strong. Um, also, you know, that bridging of the fingers that we talked about at the start, you know, that's that's a D chord. Like, I'm, I know it in the air, I don't mean my guitar, but it's also muscle memory. But my fingers are bridged. I'm holding frets down close to the fret. There's a lot of people trying to play chords where they've got, they've got it all slid up here and you can see this big space here and they're like... Well, that's why you've got to keep your fingers as close to this fret, not touching it. You need a tiny little gap, all right? So that each note rings out nicely. So this exercise, it's very important for even holding chords. So it's a fundamental, it's a foundation. Um, you should start with it really and spend some time doing it. I think that what then that, it avoids a lot of frustration, even just a little bit down the track of your trying to learn. Um, so I recommend, uh, I play a lot of guitar just sitting at home in front of the TV. people would say that was terrible. You can do this backwards too, by the way. My perspective on that is, you know, you're probably better off sitting and, you know, it's quiet and you're concentrating. But if you're sitting and you're watching TV and you're noodling on your guitar, or, you know, maybe the TV is off and you're just sitting relaxing and you're just noodling, um, playing your guitar, that's a hell of a lot better than not doing it at all. And if that means you do it for two or three hours instead of 15 minutes, then the benefits are huge. Because yeah, the amount of, the amount of your practice is everything. Not everything, but it's big. Anyway, that's that's number one. And I don't know how often I'm gonna do these, but I just really for a while now have been feeling like I really wanna just introduce this stuff and throw it out there so anyone that's interested in learning it's just like it's just there anyway enjoy bye